Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Ruth chapter 4, verse 9, Genesis chapter 17, verse 10, and Lamentations chapter 4, verse 11. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for these scriptures, Lord God. We thank you for being such a loving and all-knowing God, a consistent God, a God who is worthy of praise and all of the glory. We worship you, God. We worship you and no one else. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Ruth chapter 4, verse 9. Then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have brought from the hand of Naomi all that belong to Imelech and all that belong to Chilin and Mahalan. I'm sorry, I said Imelech. It's Elimelech. All right, Elimelech and all that belong to Chilin and to Mahalan. All right. And so um, um, for this specific passage, you know, this is the confirmation that it is done. It is finished. Right. Um, that Boaz had um, completely bought um, Naomi's land. Um, he had taken um, um, Ruth under his wings as a kinsman redeemer. Uh, he had taken Naomi under his care and he had, he had taken the land and married the land. Right. And so remember Boaz represents, he's a representation of Christ and the new covenant, right? Remember the first redeemer represents the law, right? Remember he was unable to redeem. Why? Because he was the law. The law is not able to redeem, right? He, he is not the law. He is a reflection of the law. And so the law is unable to redeem. The law can point out sin, but it is unable to make man righteous. And so we realize that this new covenant that Christ Jesus has brought us under, um, we have to, to be thankful, right? Because it has so much better promises and not for God, for us, they are so that we can be engrafted into this great tree. We can have a great covering and a final atonement, not um, having to go back and be atoned for each time, right? Each time we sin, each time we um, come out from under the covering or something happens and we trip up, right? We have a perfect atonement that's for all sin, past, present, and future. All right. It says, then Boaz said to the elders and all the people, you are witnesses this day that I have brought from the hand of Naomi, all that belong to Elimelech and all that belong to Chilin and Mahalan. All right. The second verse is Genesis chapter 17, verse 10. This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. All right. And so this was God um, speaking to um, um, Moses and, and um, I mean, not Moses, Abraham. And he is talking about the fact that he wants all of the men from this point on to be circumcised, right? But remember, circumcision occurred after belief in God, right? So remember faith, this was a reflection of the new covenant, the covenant that was to come. Um, and, and it was showing that, Hey, there was going to be a need for something necessarily greater. Why? Because faith was what took precedence. Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him as righteousness. And so as Abraham had believed God, that's what made him righteous, right? It was not this circumcision. This circumcision was an outward reflection of what should have been occurring on the inside, right? The covenant between man and God, the true covenant, the covenant of, of his spirit and the spirit that was behind the law. But of course, we know that man 
man was unable to, through the law and through these traditions of men, become holy and righteous, right? He he was the circumcision could not make him righteous. That was a part of the law. That was a part of that first covenant, right? But because God had a greater plan, he made a way for us that we could be permanently righteous, right? And that was through the new covenant, right? It says, This is my covenant, which I shall keep which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you. Every male among you shall be circumcised. And so God was wanting that cutting away of flesh, cutting away of the things of this world, separation from the things of this world, right? In order to make them like him, to make them holy. But this was just the first portion. This was the the physical or outward um, um, symbol of what should have already been occurring on the inside, right? This was an outward sign to the rest of the world that their hearts should have been dedicated. But of course, man could not fulfill that. And so they needed a redeemer. They needed someone who could save them from the law who could not redeem. They needed someone who could cover them when they, when they fell short, which was all the time right? That was man. And so it says this covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and your offspring after you, every male among you shall be circumcised. This is the first covenant. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that so close together. Every male among you shall be circumcised. And let me separate those words. This is the first covenant. All right. And so, um, Lamentations chapter four, verse 11, the Lord gave full vent to his wrath. He poured out his hot anger and kindled a fire in Zion that consumed its foundations. This is a beautiful verse when you're looking at these other verses because it's talking about the foundation being consumed, right? It's not just talking about you know, fire destroying things. It's talking about the foundation. It says the Lord gave full vent to his wrath. Why would the Lord give full vent to his wrath? Well, because the sin had not been atoned for, right? The people had not let the spirit of God right on their heart. They were all circumcised, right? Most likely, more than likely, all of them were circumcised. Most of the people who were Hebrew were circumcised, right? And so, because they would have been shunned otherwise, and they would have had to leave uh, Jerusalem. But um, if they were Hebrew, Hebrew, they were circumcised. They were physically a part of the physical portion of the covenant, right? But but they needed something more. These people in Lamentations, when Babylon was coming in, they had um had had put their hope in the world, right? They had called on Egypt when they needed help. They had other foreign gods. They were ruthless, right? They were not caring and not loving. They forgot about the elders. They forgot about the widows. They forgot about all the things that God had had told them, right? They were trying to take people's land and the land does not even belong to the people, right? We were stewards in the land. We were sojourners in the land. And so they hadn't had the spirit written on their heart, um, the law written on their heart through the spirit. They had not accepted the, the spiritual portion, the faith portion of what should have been um the foundation right and so god had to go in and he was destroying this foundation it says the the lord gave full vent to his wrath and then the, there's something to think about right there right let's pause and think about the fact that if someone had atoned for this sin could it could god have given full vent to his wrath well no, right? If if Christ atoned for the sin, then the full wrath will not come to those who have accepted that atonement, right? But for those who have not accepted the atonement, and this is, of course, talking about us now who believe, we're not going to have to face the wrath. Why? Because someone else has faced the wrath. We, we face suffering. We face trials. We face afflictions of man, but we don't face the wrath of God being poured out full vent, right? It says the Lord gave full vent to his wrath. 
he poured out his hot anger and he kindled a fire in Zion. And so it was God who was coming in through this consuming fire to cleanse and purify all of this sin and this dross away. It says, and he kindled a fire in Zion that consumed its foundations. And so all of those things, those things that they had based their beliefs in those things that they had put their hope in. Um, God came in and he wiped those things away. He cleansed those things away. Why? Because he wanted this new covenant to begin to get ready to come forth, right? He had to consume the foundation in order to, to have his people realize that, hey, You guys were missing something. You had the physical circumcision, but your heart was not circumcised. You had all of the outward look, but you didn't, the inside of the cup was, uh, was unclean. Amen. And so God wants us to be good stewards of what he has placed us charge over. He wants us to, um, um, be people who have hit through the spirit have the law written on our heart and not on tablets. He wants us to take part in this new covenant and all of the promises that come with it. And he wants the land to be married, right? He wants to cover us with his wings. And and when we come under that covering, when we submit to that covering, God is, is able to fully redeem, right? God is able to marry the land. God is able to put a blessing upon those who have submitted to him. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for your love, your truth, your holiness, God. Forgive us for all of our sins and help us to be watchful for you, Lord God. Help us to have your word written on our heart that we might not sin against you, Lord Jesus. Help us to not just go through traditions and physical things and not um, remember you. God, we love you and we want to remember you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Take care and be blessed. Bye.